Uh, good day, guys. Uh, my name's Aaron Pollock. For everybody that haven't met me yet, um, it's a pleasure to be here. The last time I actually played here was for uh, when I came home from Memphis uh, when I got to the International Blues Challenge finals over there, uh, which was great. And I've been able to use that title for three years now, which is fantastic for me. I just say current. I don't mention the year, I just say current. Um, we're going to start with a cover song, but we're going to do an older Robert Johnson tune here. Um, you'll start sort of understanding what I'm about. I love the 1930s Delta Blues music, so uh, we're going to start right there. This one's called Me and the Devil. back. The last time I was here was 2019 and 2020 and I, I did the Melbourne Blues Challenge and got all the way to the finals and went over to Memphis and you know, life was up here and then two weeks later I'm, I'm gardening in the backyard and you know, I'm all the way down there. But I, uh, I was lucky enough to write a lot of songs uh, during that time, uh, especially this song. This one is uh, called Damn, but I wrote this on the way to the semi-final actually coming here in Melbourne. I remember the whole premise is that you've got to have a, you know, an original set list. You've got to put out your own songs. And I was just like waiting for that one tune that sort of would come along that would just fill in my set list. And so I actually sat in the car and, um, you know, a couple hours before the thing and started penning this one down. Um, and I actually took this all the way to Memphis too. So this song's really special to me. Um, of course, my uh, girlfriend's religious grandmother hates it because it's called Damn. But that doesn't matter. Here we go. I 
song of mine. Uh, by old I mean my old. It's, I've only been playing for about seven years so it's, it's, all, st like, it's all still new isn't it? But for me it's old because I was like 15 years old or something when I wrote it. Oh maybe 16. Uh, it's one of the first bluesy songs I ever wrote actually. Um, I got hooked into ragtime guitar playing. I, I, you know, I was a sucker for it especially at that time and um, I couldn't find a good band so it, you know it was cheaper to start doing it on my own. So I just do all the one-man band stuff now too, and you know, at least the bills get paid that way. But this one's called I'd Rather Be Alone With You. Memphis Mini. I'm a massive fan of Memphis Mini if you guys are familiar with her. She wrote a lot of songs that you know you've probably heard in the blues world but um, you know it took a few years for her to get 
uh, recognised as per usual in the blues uh, yeah, history. Um, my reason for, uh, I should mention, I am selling CDs at the moment. Uh, Ali's selling them, uh, she's been doing a lovely job selling them up the back here, so if you do want to take me home with you, I've got some CDs up the back. Um, it's a new album called Tributal Blues, and I'll tell you all about that too. But I definitely put this song on here for a reason. Um, I remember being in Memphis, of course, and uh, Memphis Mini, uh, ironically, is not buried in Memphis. She's actually in Mississippi. And there's a town called Walls, Mississippi, so like, it's like the, the Albury, you know, it's like, it's on the border of both. Um, and they have a beautiful headstone there now for her. And, you know, I went and visited her grave and sort of paid my respects. Um, and the headstone, yeah, it's beautiful and it's, you know, it's really nice and it's modern. But it wasn't always the case. And so further down the street, you go to the uh, Memphis Blues Museum, I think it's called. Um, the Blues History Museum. And they have her original grave marker there on display. And it's just two pieces of pine wood. I mean, that thin. Uh, making a cross shape. One nail through the centre, terrible job too. And Memphis Mini spelt wrong, written on it with some sort of marker. So that was what she was sort of, that was her legacy that they left for about 30 years uh, before. Uh, I think it was Bonnie Wright actually came along and, and funded it and got her a, a, a good uh, head marker. So that sort of reminded me to uh, put a Memphis Mini song on my new record. This one's called Hoodoo Lady.
thank you, and I uh, thank Memphis Mini too. All right, since we're on the uh, the old blues artist page, let's do one by uh, Blind Lemon Jefferson. Uh, he sounds like a cocktail, but he's a he's a real blues singer. He's been around for a long, long time. He died in the 1930s, I think, um, in Chicago. Um, the way he died, I heard, was that he froze on the ground after his final recording sessions, and with a bottle of whiskey in his pocket and twenty dollars in the other pocket too. Um, I learned that actually from a man named Fruitland Jackson. He uh, I met him at uh, Buddy Guys Legends Club in Chicago, and he sat me down and said to me, yes, you know, I know the true story about how Blind Lemon died. And so, that's, I don't know, uh, he's, I don't know if he's lying to me or not, but that's how I heard he passed away. Um, and it's been, that's the sort of story that circulates about Blind Lemon. He's a fantastic singer. Um, he does things with the guitar that people don't even bother doing anymore, because, you know, it's, it's too good, you know, it's just way ahead of its time. Um, but I'm going to try it. Uh, this one is uh, known in the blues world as a song called C.C. Ryder, but Blind Lemon Jefferson did his own version, and he called it Karina's Blues. Uh, I also released this on a record about five years ago. On a yeah, five years ago. Wow, five years ago I released an album called The Blues Tapes. So that was my uh, that was my first sort of bluesy record, as an acoustic blues thing, um, a younger version of what you've been watching on stage right now. And yeah, this song's on that one. song here. Yeah. Uh, this is also on the new album, the, the new album song. Um, weird story, uh, well for me, I, I get a illing feeling when I think about my last two records because um, 
during uh, lockdown, I moved into my first apartment um, on my own. I lived on my own to all of lockdown. And, um, I, I moved in there like a month before it all happened. So it was just a lot happening, you know. Okay. Pros and cons, uh, being a musician, of course. Uh, I shared the... The house sort of splits into two. It's like a unit, you know. So I've got a, an older woman living next to me who is 100% deaf. I know it shouldn't be a pro, but it's a massive pro for a musician. I, um, I bought a trumpet. I bought an upright piano. Yeah, seriously, I was up all night, all hours, and I'll tell you what that is. So that was kind of, you know, sorry about that, but yeah. Um, it really helped. But the cons were that, you know, from here to like that middle table there, um, that was the train station. And, you know, even during COVID, that thing ran all day. And I, I spent all my COVID money on building a studio to survive the times, you know. I shouldn't say that, but, you know, it, it helped. It really assisted in what I was doing. And so I couldn't, you know, how many songs can you put a train in the background? You know, one will do. You don't want a whole album of just, like, trains going along. And it's not a cool train either. It's like a Melbourne train. You know, it's, it's kind of not the sound you want. So anyway, I, I started getting pretty weird, and I would wake up at about 10 to 11 at night, make a coffee, put my dressing gown on, and I would record from the last train of the night so 6 a.m. in the morning, about 6:14 was when the first train came because I remember it like, you know, and I did that for about three months, um, and I recorded two albums uh, during that time. Um, it was nice. It was you know, still the night, and you know, it was actually quite beautiful. But when I listen to it, I just go, oh, like, <laughs> just reminds me of being up way too late. You know, so that's the story. So the first album is called Separated Through Time, and the second record is called Tribal Blues. Um, they've both been doing really well. Separated through time, got nominated for Best Blues Album in Victoria from Music Victoria. Which, that was great. Um, the weird part, I, I sold about 15 records because I couldn't sell them. I couldn't play live gigs, but it got a nomination. It was a weird paradox, you know. Um, and then Troubadour Blues, I've been touring that uh, ever since I got home from the USA a few, a few months ago. I'm currently on my Tribal Blues tour right now, so the CDs are up the back if you do want to buy one. This is uh, one of my songs from the record. The, the album has seven original songs and seven old blues songs. This one's called When You've Got Nobody, You've Got Nobody to Lose.
she's gone away. Oh, she found me at the bar, and the bottom is where I'm gonna stay. So when you're lonely, you can only feel the blues. When you're lonely, baby, you can only feel the blues. When you realize you got nobody, darling, you got nobody to lose. When you realize you got nobody, you got nobody to lose. We're going to sort of switch it up to a new song I've been writing. Um, I, I wrote this when my toilet broke. Not from me either, I, I mean it. Um, in Austin, Texas. I was with my girlfriend. We had to sit outside. A, don't get a tiny house with a porta potty. That's all I can say. Was, you get what you pay for, you know. So it was a tiny house, porta potty. It's, no one's eating, are they? <laughs> I always forget about that. I always forget there's dining involved too, I'm sorry. I mean, anyway, it was a stinky situation. And so I went outside and I wrote this song. And this one's called So Many Good Things to Come. Untying my payments for so long, I did not know, I would not believe it. Oh, your love did not show. On oh, love the good thing. On oh, lots of good things So many good things To come And I heard a rumor That you left This home Could have swallowed all my pride, yet I don't. All love the good things to come. So many good things to come. recording that one very soon. I'd love to get like a jazz band involved or something. Just imagine trumpets and do what you will with it in your head. Yeah.
All right, I'm just going to show this guitar again. Now this is also on the new record. Um, I'm a massive fan of Blind Willie McTell. I don't know if you guys are too. Um, if you like the Oldman Brothers as well, this is called Statesboro Blues. This is my favourite blues song, I think, probably ever. But, uh, always, uh, it's always meant a lot to me too. I, you know, I was a big Bob Dylan fan growing up, and Bob Dylan's favourite artist is Blind Willie McTell, so that's a bit of, bit of trivia about uh, Blind Willie for you.
you know about that baby I got them all states for blue Be sweating again, right? The weather's been that bad. I, I, you know, you lose weight this way, surely you do. For one, you don't eat most of the day because you don't want to sing on a full stomach, and then you sweat, and it's a win win for me anyway. This one, this one is uh, by a man named Lonnie Johnson. Uh, I'm a big fan of Lonnie Johnson. He was another sort of forgotten, you know, not to the blues community, but you know, in the music world, Lonnie Johnson was. You know, Relatively unknown still. And, uh, he had an excellent way of playing the guitar. He always did that sort of. He doesn't. You know, I'm just tuning. That's not what he does. Uh, he would do that sort of, you know, independent thumb thing where you sort of play the bass on your own. And like I said, you save money that way. You don't have to hire a bass guitarist anymore. And then you do the rhythm on top, which would be like. And then you uh, do the lead guitar on top too. So uh, this is a Lonnie Johnson song. And this one's called I'm So Tired of Living All Alone. Song. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Aaron Pollock. I'm sure I've met everybody just in, uh, about once now, I think. I think that's what's happening. Um, it's lovely to see so many friendly faces here too. Uh, don't be afraid to come up and chat to me. I'll just be like hovering and just, you know, doing that stuff when you walk around. I do have CDs. Uh, beautiful Ali at the back is selling some CDs uh, on behalf of me, so I'll go stand next to the box like, you know, like Sale of the Century or something, you know. Uh, 
and I'll just I'll just advertise my CD. All right, let's finish on a uh, an old Robert Johnson song. This one's called Hallahound on My Trail.
me running with a how hound on my Thank you, folks. See you guys next time. Thanks. Usually, you're ready for that. I actually wasn't ready for that. Um, no, seriously, like. Encores are the, the darnest thing, really, because you're just like hovering, waiting for people to say, oh, okay, twisted my arm, you know. But this time around, I actually don't have a song anymore. This one's called Someday Baby. Mom!